In today's video, we're going to be taking a look at Dwarf Lab's latest app for their Dwarf 2 telescope that's about to be released on Christmas Day. Um, it is now the 22nd of December, so that's a few days time. So I've got very little time to get this out ahead of that, just to give people a bit of a heads up of what to expect for their Dwarf 2 as an update. Now, a bunch of us have been beta testing this new version 2 app and giving feedback to Dwarf Lab, which they're, they're very receptive to, really friendly people to deal with. I can't emphasize that enough. And um, I've fed back to them a few ideas and they've given me a few tips as well, which I want to sort of share with you guys. I've got permission to do a video before the release on Christmas Day. Now, I've been out um, one or about one and a half nights, one of them was caught short, caught short, <laughs> one of them was cut short and so I've not got a huge amount of experience but I've been playing with the app indoors as well and I know my way around it so I can show you how the astro part of it works and some, some hints and tips for that as well that I've been sort of fed back from, from Grace at Dwarf Lab. So, right, so select Dwarf Lab app connect there we are we connected and the first page that comes up is very new but I think this is quite useful because the first step when you're using astro mode is to take dark frames and to take the dark frames, you need to turn the lens so it's pointing down and put it in the back so it's as dark as possible. And you take the dark frames and then it uses those to subtract the noise from the sensor. But it's quite easy to forget to turn the ring light off and the battery indicator on the dwarf too. But having these available on the first page reminds you to turn them off before you enter the app. So here we are in, in the app and this first, this second page looks quite familiar like the previous app. It's only when you start clicking on things that you do notice some differences. So we've got focus mode and this has been improved. It will now auto focus in astro mode. If so, if we go in, click on photo and select astro and go back on focus. You can see you've got plus minus auto and infinity and I did wonder what infinity did um, but basically you when you first do it you do auto and it will take about a minute to focus on a star it will focus on that star then go past it and then go back into focus so a little bit like contrast detect auto focus on a camera but then I learned from Dwarf Lab through speaking to them that in subsequent uses, if you just click on the infinity sign, it will focus really quickly. So I'm looking forward to trying that out. So other changes are if you click on the function button here, we've got two tabs, we've got that box tab, and then we've got this kind of equalizer slider tab. So we go on the box tab. This gives the order you need to kind of do things in. So first of all, you take your dark frames. And one thing I did notice was that the dark frames now take 20 minutes, which is quite a long time. So I was a little bit worried about battery life. Um, the reason for the longer dark frames is because it's now taking dark frames for both 4K and 2K with one times one binning and two times two binning. But once done, that's okay. So next you move on to calibration and this is where you need to point the lens towards clear sky at a decent angle to clear objects. And what it will do is it will, it will look at three parts of the sky, plates of those parts of the sky, so the dwarf too knows where it's pointing. Now, the word calibration in astrophotography means darks, lights, bias frames, things like that. So that is a little bit confusing if you come from a world of astrophotography would probably call that star alignment. So I did I did suggest that in my feedback. Um, I don't know if they'll go with that though. Next, we've got your library, which is massively improved. So this is all targets. And as you can see, we've got colorful pictures for a lot of these objects. And there's, there's a lot of them. 
there is a lot of them. Just keeps on going. So, I mean, when the app, the first app was first introduced, there was a handful of objects. So this has grown extensively and Wolf Lab are very proactive at improving things, friendly to communicate with, really great to deal with. This catalog is much better and it's subdivided. So you can just click on solar, lunar, planets, stars, nebulae and galaxies and clusters to narrow things down. Now, I did notice that I was picking objects that weren't suitable, so I've fed back to Dwarf Lab and asked if, um, based on your location, whether only suitable objects could be sort of displayed first or, or the others greyed out, something like that. And, the, and uh, Grace at Dwarf Lab said she would uh, pass that on. So once you've done your darks to get rid of your noise, your calibration, so the Dwarf 2 knows where it's pointing, chosen an object, you can go in your settings then, and here you can choose what type file type out of FITS, which is um, very commonly used in astronomy and TIFF. So you can choose which one of those you want, and you can select your count, single or stat image, and high resolution 4K or 2K. Okay, so what I need to do now is go on this tab below the box, and we've got shutter. I want 15 seconds, I want 15 seconds. So slide that over and that's how you select longer exposures. Go to your gain, that's like ISO on a camera. 80 I believe is the place to be. There, you go. there we go. And then finally, you get the choice of having your infrared filter, IR cut filter removed, so it's in, you know, so it's more sensitive to IR, the nebulae, or whether you want the IR cut in place, which is going to be better for things like the moon. And there we have it. There's other modes, of course. So um, as well as astro mode, you've got photo, video, pano, panoramas, burst and time lapse as well. I quite fancy having a go with the time lapse. So yeah, more to explore, but that was the Astro that we just took a look at there. And uh, there we have it. It will be launched in a few days time on Christmas Day 2023. And I hope you enjoy using it. Okay, so that's it from me and Dwarfy here for this uh, video. I just want to take the opportunity to thank Dwarf Lab for for giving me this actually um, quite a while ago now and uh, not, every, not every company would do that just give you give you a telescope so that is just remarkable so thank you so much for both that and for letting me beta test this new version 2 app prior to the launch and also for letting me sort of like reveal it a, li a few days early so people can get a little bit of a heads up about it and uh, I just want to also thank my Patreons and my channel members that really help make the community around the channel and support the channel with the costs of running the channel and the time it takes and things like that. So really, thank you very much. That really does mean a lot to me. And uh, I want to thank everyone for watching as well. And if you like the content, consider subscribing. All that remains is to wish everyone a happy Christmas and new and um, enjoyable new year. And I'll see you on the flip side in 2024.